Hopefully you like that montage. We don't know if it's good because we haven't shot it yet. But today we're reviewing the RX0 from Sony, their new action camera. Well, it's not really an action camera, but it looks like, you know, a GoPro shape, size, it looks similar. But if you go on Sony's website, they don't actually have many photos of this shooting a, an action sport. So what we're gonna do today is test out the image quality, Rocky style. Let's go. So to test out the image quality, we're gonna do the uh, training montage and we couldn't afford Usain Bolt, the fastest man alive, uh, second to Barry Allen, the Flash. So that's why we have the last best person to do this uh, montage, me. Don't worry, I've- I'm wearing closer, oh shit, my It's okay, no, no, keep rolling, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> You're not seeing this. <laughs> and it's so f***ing cold. You know we're filming this. Shh. Oh, that's the RX-0. <laughs> I dropped the RX-0. You know we're filming this on the coldest day of Hong Kong. Sounds about right. And of course we came prepared. And the reason why I became a photographer and filmmaker is because I can't f***ing draw. So we planned a, uh, a shot list for the montage we're gonna do. We have around like 15 shots. So yeah, let's get to it. So I can see why people are comparing this with the GoPro. It's got the same sort of rigid and tough outlook. It's got Duralumin. It's basically aluminum, but Tony's putting it in fancier terms. It's uh, two meter drop proof, 10 meter waterproof. You know those uh, space movies where they put like a camera on the guy's space suit? This would look better than a GoPro. But aside from its looks, it's not really an action camera. 24 millimeters F4, no IS. It's not really meant for action sports because it's not wide enough. So our first shot is the shot of me pulling down my zipper, a close-up shot. And uh, a lot of people say you can get really nice bokeh with this because it's a one inch sensor. It's much bigger than the GoPro. But the thing with that is it's a one inch sensor, yes, but it's F4 and 24 millimeters. And 24 millimeter is fine for a camera, but if it's F4, you can't really get much bokeh. And the fact that the minimum focusing distance is 0.5 meters, 50 centimeters, and at F4 and at 24 millimeters, you're not getting bokeh. No way, no way, absolutely not. But uh, yeah, let me show you the shot. Okay, maybe I'll get this background. The thing about the screen is, it's a tiny little screen, it's not even touch screen. And you can't see jack shit in broad daylight. Trying to use this, it's like playing on a little Game Boy when you were five years old. But yeah, let's try to get this shot. The shot. Oh, oh, oh. So we got kicked out of the Saiwan Ho Sports Ground, the second biggest sports ground in Hong Kong. But it doesn't matter. Rocky trains everywhere and so will we. Yeah, we got kicked out, but hey, at least we got some shots. So we're shooting at 720p right now because that's the only resolution where you can shoot 120 frames per second. And at 1080p, you can only shoot at 60 frames per second. And there's no 4K. You can do 4K if you do a clean output for the HDMI using like an Atomos recorder. That defeats the point of this camera, doesn't it? But okay. Yeah, adding on an external recorder that is quadruple the size of the RX-0 does not seem practical at all, though it is an option. Yeah, <laughs> how's that? How's that? So the thing about this camera is yes, you can shoot S-Log too and that's very good for color grading. But you're stuck at F4 and the minimum ISO for S-Log2 is 1600 ISO and you can't change the aperture. No ND filter, you can't change the aperture. So you can only change your shutter speed and that gives you very jittery footage if you're shooting 24 frames a second. It's not too good. 
So right now I'm gonna do a uh, shot of my feet stepping right in front of the camera as I run so I can slow it down later and we'll cut it right after the wide shot. See that again. You can use the high frame rate mode to shoot better quality slow motion than 720p, but like the RX100, you're limited by the duration of those clips as well as buffer times in between the shots. The thing that will really put people off from buying this camera is the fact that it doesn't have autofocus in video at least. It has it in uh, photo mode, but in video you have to set your focus point every single time. And it's just annoying because if you want to vlog with this, you can't. So like, you're doing a close-up shot and you want to get a wide shot, you can't, it's autofocus. So you have to change your focus every single time, manual focus, by pressing these buttons again and again to change your focus. Which is a hassle, isn't it? Because no way is someone doing that if they're vlogging. But anyways. So yeah, the bigger sensor's ability to produce tinsy bit more shallow depth of field is actually working against it in this case. Sure, GoPro doesn't have autofocus either, but with that wide of a lens and that small sensor, you don't need it. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is, it's very hard to get a camera stand. I wish we had a gorilla pod right now. Oh, this is harder than it looks. Oh, fuck. I'm too tired. Oh, what the f- uh, I think that's enough. Uh, I think that's enough. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna get a shot of me uh, leaping over leaping over the arc zero. But you know what? Luckily, I'm not a girl. Because a girl would not like the shot. Let's go. I'm gonna do it one more time. All the shots so far actually look all right. But what happens when we go handheld? With no IS on the camera, you can't really get a stable shot, no stabilization. Why didn't they put stabilization on this? I don't know. It makes sense to put it here because it's, it's an action camera. But... You're not gonna get a very stable shot of this. You can slow it down when you do it down. When you slow it down into slow motion, everything's stable because it's in slow motion. But at regular speed, like this, it's gonna look very shaky. So we're about one hour into our shoot, and the RX0 is dead. But luckily you can charge it by USB, micro USB, with a power bank. That sounds great, yeah? It doesn't work with every single micro USB cable. I tried two other cables, it wouldn't charge. It only works, well, that I've tested, with the cable that it came with. Maybe it's to do with like the out, output of the cable, but it doesn't work with every single micro USB cable. So don't think just because your cable can charge your phone, that it can charge your Arc Zero. It can't. But we're on our last shot. We're, I'm gonna be a police in this scene. I'm gonna be beating some people with a baton. Like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the RX Zero on top of the, on, on the selfie stick. Get a uh, overhead shot like that. Hopefully it's wide enough. 24 millimeters should be okay. But yeah, let's see how it goes. Yeah, battery life isn't the best, but neither are other cameras similar in size. At least you can charge it on the go with this one. I'll be honest and say for the most part, if you're shooting slow motion with this, the footage looks pretty alright since shutter speed won't affect your clips that badly here. But enough of me fooling around in this montage. At this point, you're probably wondering how the image quality holds up against its main competitor. So we're back inside now, not as hot as... <laughs> not as hot. So we're back inside now and it's not as cold as outside, so it's much better. Um, the great thing about the RX Zero is you can bring it to places like, you know, a restaurant. It's not as intrusive as, you know, an A7S. But a, um, the thing about this is, it's supposedly better indoors because bigger sensor, one inch sensor, much bigger than the GoPro, yes, but the lens, it's f4, whereas on the GoPro, it's f2.8, and the GoPro shoots 4K. So when you scale down the GoPro footage from 4K to 1080p, and f2.8, will you really see a difference in image quality? Actually, yes. Yes, there is. 
the ARC-0 produces much finer details with that 1-inch sensor and more accurate colors too, not to mention crispier audio. So here you can really see how much more flat of an image the ARC-0 can give you, whereas the stabilization on the GoPro makes the ARC-0 look like I've had one too many coffee. The thing about the GoPro is you can choose between wide, linear, I think telephotos, all, but the point is you can zoom in if you want. Of course, it's cropping the sensor, but at least you have the choice to. So right now it's on linear, so it's not as distorted, but it's still two, um, 2K. We did a few more tests afterwards, and to conclude, the ARC-0 has better fine details, realistic colors, S-Log, and manual controls over exposure, whereas the GoPro has built-in stabilization, choice of focal length, and 4K. The dynamic range is pretty similar on both. Oh, and one more thing about the ARC-0. The thing about this is, the ARC-0 has a, has a mic jack. The ARC-100 doesn't. So it's basically a big to the audience, a cue to the customers for not having it in the RX100 when they can include it in such a small body. It doesn't make sense. This has a mic jack. This action camera has a mic jack, but not its like flagship point and shoot. Mic. Of course, you can take photos with this as well, but you know you really aren't buying it for the photo features. 21 megapixel, similar one inch sensor to the ARX-100 Mark V, 16 frames per second. So you can get like some decent shots before it buffers out. It buffers out around five seconds, six seconds into it. So you can get some fairly fast uh, burst rates. And of course there's, in photo mode, there is autofocus, but of course the autofocus is still limited to the minimum focusing distance of 50 centimeters. So you can't get bokeh. Sharp, yes. Dynamic range, decent. And what do you know? You can get a little bit of bokeh in this. Mind you, your phone will produce as much bokeh, if not more, at this distance. But back to the video features. We're gonna go to a place where you really shouldn't be filming in. But with this, it's less uh, suspicious and it's less weird. They're less likely to get caught, basically. We're going to be filming Central Library. Let's go. So we're about to head into the library, a place where you really shouldn't be filming in, and a place where the security is probably going to tell Ting to stop recording, and they're already looking at us. I can see them behind us, behind me. So let's see if Ting gets caught while I continue filming the R0. Five seconds later, we got glares from the security, so we stopped recording with the A7S. But... I really don't remember and have no idea what I'm saying here. See, the thing is, nobody knows that this is a camera. <laughs> so it doesn't look like a camera, it doesn't look like a GoPro, it doesn't look like a point and shoot. People probably just think I'm holding like a box of candy or something. Because this doesn't look like a camera from afar. With GoPro, with GoPro it looks like you're holding a camera because it's so well known. But with this, it's fine. So if you're in a sneaky environment, you know, now we have to sneak it, this is perfect. There's security behind me, but I don't think they know this is a camera. So I guess if you're into this kind of stuff, sneaky cam shit. It was then that I saw four guards standing by the escalator. Anyways, back to the review. Of the dramatic music. Look. I can see myself on the Play Memory app. So you can download the 
this app on both the both the iPhone or Android phones. But the thing about the app is it freezes every like 10 seconds. So while it's useful for filming, framing your shots, you can't use that slide because it just freezes way too much. He made it out, didn't get caught. Didn't get caught. I guess that's like one reason you would have the Arc Zero. To sneak into places. Not that we're not that we're subscribing to that kind of shit. We're not telling you to go sneak into places and film people and places. We didn't film anyone else except for me. So we're not telling you to do this. We're just saying in places where you know you might get a lot of attention for holding a camera, this might be a little bit better. A little bit. You know. The ARC Zero could have been something incredible. But if you look at it now, is it a miniaturized version of the RX100? It's not. Is it a more advanced cinematic GoPro? It's not. It's not wide enough for that either. So to me, it fits right in the middle between the two of them. And I don't think that's a good thing. With the ARC Zero, the footage looks decent and both the montage and the library shots, you get fine details and colors that GoPros just lack. But at the same time, it's double the price and not wide enough to replace a GoPro for action sports. And it's not versatile enough as a camera to use as a carry around point and shoot like the RX100. It really feels like this camera could have been the perfect representation of the famous quote, the best camera is the one you have with you. It could have been, but it's not.